the Twin Towers Arcane One. Such morning as we might wake from, having been woken from by such a light, to see the light at last. That we are now no more, no less, but have been more than others, a violent land, in our money markets, in our law and orders, in our daily dailies, in our beds, a violent life, pretending to an impenetrable innocence and power symbolized by those giant twins. Their destruction. Hitler's dream, dream before they even were built, before his suicide began to fight on the side of religious fanaticism, and we, who had inherited so much of his violence and anti-communism, we, who've even ultimately financed the attack on our pretended innocence, we. So at home with fascism, denied of course, with brutality forsworn of course, with liberty sentimentalized from a core of destructive emptiness, hopelessness, cynicism at bottom, children of a star-spangled nihilism, of course, denied and forsworn from California to the New York Island, brothers and sisters, my own, so sadly struck. So deeply struck. Two. The Israeli says, "Now they know, who himself has been infested with genes from the twelve-year-long syringe of unforgettable evil. Presumably, it's we who now know what it means to be totally detested to the point of apocalypse." And it's a fascist defense against the fascist attack that the world is preparing. For there's nothing but that nothingness of a scorpion planet eating its own tail. And it's the awareness of that truth that doubles the mourning and profounds the fear of the loss of the innocence that was a lie in the first place. This time we're really trapped by truth. And it grieves us who've been so comfortable in the liberty of the lie. This time, the total mobilization of war consciousness says, even if pacifism grows, even if prevents responsive attacks, even if nonviolence triumphs, the future will be like a black man who, or like eroticism, which, while no longer lynched or censored. Will nevertheless never feel altogether at home in worldly life. The rule of nothingness is complete now. God murdered on one hand, God suicided on the other. The triumph of fascism. We're ordered to live out our non-violent lives, buying and selling and praying to violence, despite ourselves, because there's nothing else. Nothing's changed. It's only standing more revealed. Three. Celia, I know you ran toward, not away from, to help, to save, and that you saw the second plane evaporate in the wall as you ran toward, and that you saw for the first time in your life human beings. Leaping from the high ledges, and the twins collapsing into a single mountain of thousandfold death and rubble and dust. Nothing I was witness to on a television screen, thousands of miles away, on another continent, can approach the horror of what you saw as you ran toward the scene till you could no more. Dust clouds billowing through the streets, and those running for their lives from the core told you you could go no further, couldn't help, couldn't save. Oh, my brave, brave daughter, 
I know your grief isn't from afar. In vain, in vain they died, you cry, and your despair there perhaps spares, perhaps even saves us from the shock which turned the future into an archaic archaeological dig. Four, the night that has arrived, the technological night, all day. And with it morning, the fast of the fast, the bitter taste of one's own desert. And that it is not only one's own, but that we're all speaking with mouths of sand and dunes are growing, undulating with the discourse of a dazzling darkness in the sun that is broken in each of us. All night airplanes and helicopters have been flying over the burnt Siena porticos of Bologna where I happen to be mourning. It's become the state of being a black flag at half-mast hanging in midair.